cowardice will be punished. Hello and welcome back to Autopets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the battlefield. Today we'll be continuing in our look through the Astra Militarum Codex with a discussion about the Commissar and the Lord Commissar, one of the most iconic guard units. These guys have been inspiring people then executing them for many millennia now, and they're a nice dark little piece of 40k background. The rules for the Commissars have seen multiple changes over the FAQs, so we'll go over that. I know we have a couple of HQ Commissars in Severina Rain and Commissar Yarrick, but as their rules are fairly different, we'll save them for a different video. In this video, we'll take a look at the data sheets for the Commissar and Lord Commissar, how we'll equip them, any obvious buffs or synergies they have with other units on the table, and how I would run them in a competitive Imperial Guard army. In the background, the Commissars are drawn from the Officio Prefectus, and on completion of training, they are assigned to a certain regiment, where it's their firm duty to keep the regiment's morale high and the men unswervingly loyal to their duty. Commissars are expected to immerse themselves and learn the customs of the regiment, to use any local knowledge or situational judgment to be able to further their men onto great deeds, but they have incredibly high-reaching powers with the ability to summarily execute any guardsman that they deem is behaving in a cowardly manner, including commanders. And the mere threat of this is often enough to keep the guardsmen in line. They sound like lovely characters, so let's see what they can do on the tabletop. We'll take a look at the standard Commissar first then. Please bear in mind that these datasheets are very old ones, and the updated rules are found in the Astra Militarum FAQ. The reason they were changed a few times are because they had an interesting interaction with conscripts, and they were actually really strong at the start of 8th edition, as with a Commissar you could essentially put 50 fearless conscripts on the board for something like less than 200 points, which to be fair, even now would be ridiculously strong. In any case, your standard issue Commissar will cost you 16 points and is an elite's choice, and the Lord Commissar will cost you 35, including his bolt pistol and power sword, and he's an HQ choice. The standard Commissar is just a single model armed with a bolt pistol, he's got a movement of 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill are 3 plus, strength and toughness 3, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 5 plus save. So he's a fairly standard cheap guard support character. He's quite flexible with how you kit him out. You can take two items from the melee weapons list, and they can replace their bolt pistol with an item from the ranged weapons list. The ranged weapons are either a bolter or a plasma pistol if you don't want the bolt pistol, and the melee weapons are either a power fist or a power sword. Interestingly, he can't take a chainsaw, which is annoying as I probably would if I could. For the ranged weapons, I suspect that the bolter is probably the optimal choice here. It's just so much better than a bolt pistol and costs the same point, and it's even more valuable on a ballistic skill 3 plus model. Though I do fully accept that it's not quite as iconic as having a bolt pistol to execute your guardsman, so I wouldn't blame anyone at all for sticking with that for theme reasons. The plasma pistol's not bad, it could certainly give him a little extra sting in the tail once the foe gets towards your lines, but without a source of reroll ones, you are giving yourself at least a reasonable chance of losing the commissar every time that you use it with overcharge. So for me, it's a bit of a take or leave type thing. You could do it to increase your close range firepower by a little bit. The power swords and power fists aren't awful, but he does have quite a weedy stat line. He's not even quite as fighty as a company commander, and most people don't tend to take any extra combat gear on their company commanders in the first place. So typically, I wouldn't give him either the power sword or power fist. I just keep him with his bolter or bolt pistol most of the time. Now, you don't really take the commissars for their fighty profile. You take them for their special rules, and the commissars have two. Firstly, they have their aura of discipline, which is unchanged since... It came out in that your Commissar just gives his leadership to any units within 6 inches of him. Having leadership 8 rather than leadership 7 for your standard guard squads will certainly help them stay in the fight a little bit longer. So every time they were about to lose casualties from a morale test, they'll typically lose by one less. His second rule is summary execution, and this is the one that has been changed. If a unit fails a morale test within 6 inches of him, you can choose to execute one model in the squad. If you do, then one model of your choice in that unit is slain, and the morale test is re-rolled. So basically it's the option to re-roll a morale test at the cost of one additional model. Now this probably comes into play a little bit less than you'd expect, because you have to pay one extra model to actually re-roll the morale test. It's typically only worth doing if you've rolled a 5 or a 6 on the morale test, and you're losing at least two models from that test. 
This is because the average roll on a re-roll is either 3 or 4. So if you re-roll the test after rolling a 4, you typically actually lose more casualties if you kept on doing that on average, just because of all of those casualties from summary execution. So typically only ever use it when you roll a 5 or 6 for the morale test, and you're losing at least 2 models to morale. There is one other circumstance, in which case you could maybe fish for a low number, because say if you had two models left in the squad and both of them ran away, then you've got nothing to lose by re-rolling, executing one of them, and hoping that you roll incredibly low to try and keep the other one around. In general, it's that aura of discipline that will be saving you more casualties than summary execution these days. But both are nice to have, and you don't have to use summary execution if it's going to hurt you more than it's going to help you. If we move on to the Lord Commissar now, let's see what we get for the additional points investment. Bear in mind that he is 19 points more than the regular Commissar, so the upgrade had better be worth it. Firstly, he's an HQ choice, which can help us fill out battalions, which is always nice. He's got an upgraded ballistic skill and weapon skill, he hits on 2 pluses. He also has 4 wounds, leadership 9, a 4 plus save and a 5 plus refactor field invul save, so it's a decent amount more survivable and that Leadership 9 can be really handy for that Aura of Discipline, which means that most of the squads around him will be Leadership 9, which will be two more than they normally would be. Now the Lord Commissar is locked into taking a Power Sword or Power Fist, which is one of the reasons why he costs a little bit more. With the Power Sword he's 35 points, if he upgrades to the Power Fist, he'll cost you 39 points. I'd say the two are relatively well balanced, as a guard character he's still not going to be any sort of real beat stick in close combat, but it is only a few extra points to significantly increase his damage output, and hitting on twos he isn't too bad a choice for using that power fist. Other than that he's also got these standard ranged weapon options, the bolter and plasma pistol, I typically choose one of these, the plasma pistol might be a little bit more viable seeing as he hits on twos, but again if you do go overheating it then you could potentially lose an even more expensive character in one shot, so again typically I usually stick with the cheap bolter. Other than that, he has exactly the same rules as before, his aura of discipline and summary execution rules being just the same. So he is just a little bit better at keeping your guardsmen in the fight, he's a little bit tougher and fightier, and he fills an HQ choice. So he certainly has his niche. In general, both of these guys are going to be happiest when they're surrounded by a whole infantry battle line, as they'll just be a lot more efficient if they're providing those leadership buffs to quite a lot of units rather than just one or two, in which case you're probably better off just taking more guardsmen. Next let's talk quickly about the different buffs and upgrades that we can give Commissars. Firstly we have the option of Warlord Traits and Relics, and Draconian Discipline is a very interesting choice for a Commissar. Basically this one works differently if you put it on a Commissar rather than a standard company commander, then it works a little bit differently. Basically the summary execution role takes preference, but if the morale test is still failed after that, then you execute a further D3 models, and the leadership test is considered to have been passed. Now this is a fairly heavy price to pay, as you'll be losing anything up to 4 models in one turn at the price of passing the morale test, so it's not going to be the most efficient ever on your standard battle line infantry squads. The place that this can be useful is on conscripts, who could potentially fail a morale test by an awful lot, and don't really care too much if you're executing between 2 and 4 models for them to stick around. Well, I'm sure the conscripts care, but we don't really care as their commanders. This could mean if you filled it in alongside a bunch of conscripts, then you could have them be sort of pseudo-fearless, meaning that they're going to be sticking around until the end of the game, unless you lose the commissar for some reason. This one could give you some pretty powerful objective holding presence, as it stops you from taking mass casualties due to morale. Another interesting warlord trait for commissars is the master of commands trait. This is the one that allows him to issue an order per turn, and because he doesn't have a regiment keyword, the FAQ says that he can issue it to whatever regiment he wants, whether it's Militarum Tempestus or Cadian or whatever, so it could be used to give yourself one extra very flexible order there. Obviously with Warlord traits, old grudges and grand strategists are always great, and would be fine to put on a Commissar if that was the best place for them. In terms of relics, you can get a relic bolt pistol called the Emperor's Benediction, this one will be best on a Lord Commissar because of the 2 plus ballistic skill. It's basically a bolt pistol with 12 inch range, 3 shots, AP minus 1 and 2 damage, and it can also target characters if they're not the closest model. As with all relic bolt pistols, it's not exactly going to set the world on fire, but it could be a fun little surprise punch. You could also potentially use the Blade of Conquest to soup up that power sword on the Lord Commissar. Having strength plus 2, AP minus 4 and damage D3 makes him an actual credible threat to a lot of targets. Though I still think that most of the time I'd prefer to just take a power fist. It's not quite as good, but it doesn't use up a relic slot and it's only 4 points more. Commissars don't generally have the greatest amount of synergy with other characters, and they sort of have a bit of anti-synergy with the Primaris Psyker. 
in that they'll try and execute them if the Primaris Psyche suffers perils of the warp. Occasionally this could actually be quite helpful, preventing the psychic explosion from taking out lots of your units nearby, but as the Primaris Psychers have four wounds, typically the first perils isn't actually going to kill them. But your Commissar certainly is if the perils happens, so most of the time you probably don't want your Primaris Psychers anywhere near your Commissars, just in case they get twitchy with their bolt pistols. In terms of stratagems, one alternative infantry morale buff is the Officio Prefectus Command Tank, essentially making one of your tanks into a Lord Commissar with a leadership of 9 aura. It's 2 command points though, so it's a bit uncertain whether that's worth it, and the enemy can directly shoot the tank, but just bear in mind that that's another potential way of getting higher leadership guardsmen on the table without having to buy yourself a Commissar. One other little niche stratagem that you can use for Commissars is Unquestioning Obedience from the new Militarum Tempestus stratagems. This is a 1 command point expenditure that you can use to give your Commissar a 12 inch aura of fearlessness for all friendly Militarum Tempestus. Could be handy in a pinch if you're expecting to take multiple squads with casualties from morale, though I think that this is quite a niche one. So when you're actually playing a game, the Commissars are generally going to be best at the heart of a big infantry formation, giving them all out that leadership buff, whether it's leadership 8 from a regular Commissar or leadership 9 from a Lord Commissar. Their viability is basically going to be determined by how many big 10-man infantry squads you're taking, as these guys are generally going to take the most casualties from morale. If the enemy kills 6 or 7 of them in a turn, then the Commissar's leadership buff could be really handy to help the squad survive. They're also not so bad for other more specialised squads, such as special weapon squads. They only have a leadership of 6, so they're quite susceptible to taking a few scattered casualties and a lot of the squad running with a bad roll. So if you are running a few of them, it's certainly worth keeping them in Commissar Aura. If you are running an absolute ton of infantry, I think it's pretty reasonable to justify either the inclusion of a Commissar or a Lord Commissar. Over the course of the game, they should add up to saving a few guardsmen here and there. And plus you do get the mediocre fighty profile of either character as an extra bonus, or even just an annoying character that can sit on objectives and things, so they're pretty reasonable to include in an infantry-heavy army. You do always have to weigh up the alternative, though, of just taking more guardsmen in the first place. For an example, just for a regular commissar, you have to think whether or not he's actually going to save you four guardsmen's lives over the course of the game, because if he isn't, then it might well have just been worth taking the four guardsmen in the first place. The Lord Commissar is more expensive, but he is a little bit fightier. And more importantly, he does fill up an HQ choice, which can be very handy for filling out battalions if you've already taken, say, a lot of company commanders elsewhere. When you're deploying, you want to be putting your infantry squads so they're chaining back so they at least have one man within the Commissar's aura, and you really can fit an awful lot of infantry in the auras this way. I wouldn't say they're quite as important for protecting compared with your psychers and company commanders, but if you can deploy them out of line of sight at no extra cost, there's no reason not to, as it might well keep them safe from snipers and things. As your infantry battle line gets further degraded, they're going to be a lot less valuable in the late game, so it's worth being a little bit more aggressive with them. If they can sacrifice themselves to keeping the enemy held up for a turn, then it's not a bad idea. Or you could send them to sit on objectives, and they can be annoying to remove because of the character targeting rules. I wouldn't just charge them into enemy squads that are obviously going to kill them, as then you're basically just throwing them away for pretty much no gain. In general, it's better to force the opponent to at least attribute some shooting or close combat charges against them in their next turn, so they have at least one more distracting threat that might soak up a little bit more fire than they were expecting. So overall, I don't think that Commissars are essential in most guard lists, but they can be a nice little bonus if you are running a lot of infantry and you have had problems with morale issues. They're a bit less viable in any army that's already good at leadership, say Valhallans or Kaschan or Mordian, all of which have bonuses based on their regiment trait, and they can be quite powerful really combined with conscripts and the draconian discipline trait, although this does have the massive opportunity cost of not having either old grudges or grand strategist on the table. One further thing that I've not mentioned up to now is that they can be handy for filling out things like brigade detachments, 16 points is very cheap for an elite's choice, and they might be a reasonable alternative to an astropath or another cheap unit if you're just looking to fill out a brigade. So overall, they aren't the strongest of our support characters, but they do have a few niche uses, and there's definitely room for them in some competitive lists. Let me know your thoughts and experiences with Commissars down in the comments below, and whether or not you feel bad as you direct your Commissars to summarily execute your fleeing guardsmen. Thanks very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. If you've enjoyed this one, then we do have more guard content coming out every two days, so feel free to subscribe or check back later if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to support the channel, then I do have a Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on making these videos each day. There are also some other benefits for supporting, including prize draws, voting on which videos come next for the channel, 
and my own tournament lists and reports when I attend events. In any case, thank you very much for listening. I'll hope to see you guys next time.